today we're going to be looking at the recently added share for review function in Adobe InDesign 2020. We're going to have a look at how it works and also how it compares to the similar review capability already available in Adobe Acrobat DC. So stick around. The share for review function was added to InDesign 2020 in the mid-year 15.1 update. It allows designers to send their clients a link to an online copy of their InDesign layout, which the client can then review and mark up any changes, all from within a web browser. These changes will then appear right within the InDesign document for the designer to act on. So let's have a look at how that works. To get started, head up to the newly added Share icon on the upper toolbar. This icon replaces the old Publish Online button, although as you can see it still includes the Publish Online function as well as a few other new shortcuts. For now we'll just use Share for Review. The Share for Review dialog gives a few options for how you want your review to work. You can choose to share the file directly from here to a limited number of people, or you can just create a link which you can then copy and paste. You can secure this with a password if needed. Either method enables you to send the link to a client who can then open it in any modern web browser. From the review page, the client has access to a couple of basic markup tools. They can place a pin on the layout or draw freeform shapes, and these markings will then be connected to comments they can make in the sidebar. Really, if you've ever marked up a PDF, this is all pretty standard. The client can leave random pins everywhere and try to write odd messages using the drawing tool. And you'll be left trying to figure out what the hell they meant by it. So yeah, pretty standard. If you are familiar with a typical PDF markup tool set, then you may have already noticed that the markup options available here are... a little sparse? As with PDF markup, you have the ability to pin comments and draw rough shapes, but that's about it. There are no other markup tools. Most notably, there is no way to select, highlight, or interact with text. So if there is a correction or alteration needed to any copy, the client can add it into a pinned comment, but they can't actually mark the offending text that needs modifying with any degree of precision. After the client has left feedback through the online portal, the comments should appear automatically in InDesign's newly added review panel. Incidentally, if you don't have that panel showing, you can be found in the window menu under the Comments submenu. Select Review. Unfortunately, following a bit of a trend here, the options in the review panel are a bit lacking as well. You can toggle markup visibility on or off and filter comments if you have a lot of them, but that's about all. Selecting a comment in the list will jump to the location of its pin within the document, but again, it's all very basic at this stage. Finally, you have the ability to reply to comments from the review panel, as well as to resolve and delete comments from the ellipsis menu. But unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any difference between either of these options, as all that seems to happen, regardless of your selected option, is that the comment is simply deleted, with no way of finding any comments after they've been marked as resolved. So how does this system work for the client anyway? Often clients are fairly technically challenged, so it needs to be simple. And it's also not really going to work for many if there is the requirement to create accounts. So what happens if your client follows the link you've supplied them? As you can see, when they try to enter a comment, they'll be given these two options to proceed. Unfortunately, and what will no doubt be too confusing for many, the first option they're offered is to sign in with Adobe ID. Even though all they really need to do is write their name in the box below that and click continue. So you'll typically need to explain to the client when you supply them with the link that they don't need to have or need to create an Adobe ID in order to use the feedback system. But as you can see, apart from that little wrinkle, the system works pretty much the same for either guest contributors or those with an Adobe account. Adobe Acrobat has had online document review tools for a few years now. If you have either an Acrobat DC subscription or a full Creative Cloud sub, you can upload a PDF to the Document Cloud service and either create a link to it or email directly in order to share it right from within Acrobat. You access the feature from either the Send for Comments button in the Acrobat sidebar 
or via the small chain and cloud icon just above the sidebar. This enables you to either start a full review with invited participants, or just generate a link to a web portal that you can share yourself. While this may all sound a little familiar compared to the new InDesign review feature, when you get to the web portal, you may start to notice a few differences between the services. In addition to the ability to add pinned comments, which Acrobat refers to as sticky notes, you'll also find the highlight text capability, which was problematically absent from InDesign's review feature. There is also a strike through text option, as well as the same basic drawing tool. It's the highlight and strike through tools that make the document cloud review service much more useful than InDesign's new share function. This capability means that it's possible for reviewers to not only provide edits with much greater precision within a block of text, but these edits can be directly imported back into the original InDesign document via the PDF review panel. This means that changes can be made by simply clicking a button, eliminating the risk of copy paste or transcription errors. When reviewers leave comments using the document cloud interface, They'll sync back into the Acrobat DC application where you can view and respond to them just like any other PDF comments. You can also make use of the PDF comments function within InDesign. Do this by saving a copy of the marked up PDF either directly from within Acrobat or by downloading a copy of the PDF from the document cloud web interface. Then you can import this PDF into the PDF comments panel within InDesign. After the PDF is imported, you should see that the PDF comments interface is pretty similar to the review panel. There are, however, as mentioned, a couple of key differences, which mean that currently the PDF comments workflow is more useful than send for review function, despite the additional steps needed to bring the comments into InDesign. For one thing, when you mark a comment as resolved, the comment is archived rather than just being deleted. But the main benefit is the ability to apply text changes which have been made to the review file directly into the InDesign document with just a single click. This not only saves time if there are a lot of edits, it also removes the risk that a text change may be copied incorrectly. Although the functionality will no doubt improve with future updates, and the Share for Review feature is already a step in the right direction for workflow improvement, the existing PDF comment functionality combined with Adobe's Acrobat DC Cloud service is still more useful for the time being. One final thing, while the document cloud comment process is slightly less intuitive than the share for review service, forcing sign in with either account or as guest before allowing comments, as well as making the guest option even less prominent, there's not a lot between the services in this regard. And the benefits of the document cloud PDF review are far greater. Hope this has been of some help to you. Thanks for watching.